Angela Dorothea Merkel is a German politician serving as the Chancellor of Germany since 2005. She served as leader of the opposition from 2002 to 2005 and as leader of the Christian Democratic Union from 2000 to 2018. A member of the Christian Democratic Union, Merkel is the first female Chancellor of Germany. Merkel has been widely described as the de facto leader of the European Union, and the most powerful woman in the world. Following the election of Donald Trump, some media have described her as the new leader of the free world. Merkel was born in Hamburg in then West Germany, moving to East Germany as an infant when her father, a Lutheran clergyman, received a pastorate in Perleberg. She obtained a doctorate in quantum chemistry in 1986 and worked as a research scientist until 1989. Merkel entered politics in the wake of the revolutions of 1989, briefly serving as deputy spokesperson for the first democratically elected East German government led by Lothar de Maizière. Following German reunification in 1990, Merkel was elected to the Bundestag for the state of Mecklenburg-Vorpommern. As the protégé of Chancellor Helmut Kohl, Merkel was appointed as Minister for Women and Youth in 1991, later becoming Minister for the Environment, Nature Conservation and Nuclear Safety in 1994. After the CDU lost the 1998 federal election, Merkel was elected CDU General Secretary, before becoming the party's first female leader two years later in the aftermath of a donations scandal that toppled Wolfgang Schäuble. She was the leader of the opposition from 2002 to 2005. Following the 2005 federal election, Merkel was appointed to succeed Gerhard Schroeder as Chancellor of Germany, leading a grand coalition consisting of the CDU, its Bavarian sister party the Christian Social Union, and the Social Democratic Party. Merkel is the first woman to be elected Chancellor, and the first Chancellor since German reunification to have been raised in the former East Germany. At the 2009 federal election, the CDU obtained the largest share of the vote, and Merkel was able to form a coalition government with the Free Democratic Party. In the 2013 federal election, Merkel's CDU won a landslide victory with 41.5% of the vote and formed a second grand coalition with the SPD after the FDP lost all of its representation in the Bundestag. At the 2017 federal election, Merkel led the CDU to become the largest party for the fourth time, and was sworn in for a joint record fourth term as Chancellor on 14 March 2018. In foreign policy, Merkel has emphasized international cooperation, both in the context of the European Union, and NATO, and strengthening transatlantic economic relations. In 2007, Merkel served as President of the European Council and played a central role in the negotiation of the Treaty of Lisbon, and the Berlin Declaration. Merkel played a crucial role in managing the global financial crisis, and the European debt crisis. She negotiated a stimulus package in 2008 focusing on infrastructure spending and public investment to counteract the Great Recession. In domestic policy, Merkel's EnergyWend program has focused on future energy development, seeking to phase out nuclear power in Germany, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and increase renewable energy sources. Reforms to the Bundeswehr which abolished conscription, health care reform, and more recently her government's response to the 2010's migrant crisis, and the COVID-19 pandemic in Germany have been major issues during her chancellorship. She has served as senior G7 leader since 2014, and previously from 2011 to 2012. In 2014 she became the longest-serving incumbent head of government in the European Union. In October 2018, Merkel announced that she would stand down as leader of the CDU at the party convention, and would not seek a fifth term as chancellor in 2021. Chapter 1, Background and Early Life Merkel was born Angela Dorothea Kasner in 1954, in Hamburg, West Germany, the daughter of Horst Kasner, a Lutheran pastor and a native of Berlin, and his wife Herland, born in Danzig, a teacher of English and Latin. She has two younger siblings, Marcus Kasner, a physicist, and Irene Kasner, an occupational therapist. In her childhood and youth, Merkel was known among her peers by the nickname Cassie, 
derived from her last name Kasner. Merkel is of German and Polish descent. Her paternal grandfather, Ludwig Kasner, was a German policeman of Polish ethnicity, who had taken part in Poland's struggle for independence in the early 20th century. He married Merkel's grandmother Margaret, a German from Berlin, and relocated to her hometown where he worked in the police. In 1930, they Germanized the Polish name Kazmierzyk to Kasner. Merkel's maternal grandparents were the Danzig politician Willy Gents and Gertrude Almane Drange, a daughter of the city clerk of Elbing Emil Drange. Since the mid 1990s, Merkel has publicly mentioned her Polish heritage on several occasions and described herself as a quarter Polish, but her Polish roots became better known as a result of a 2013 biography. Religion played a key role in the Kasner family's migration from West Germany to East Germany. Merkel's paternal grandfather was originally Catholic, but the entire family converted to Lutheranism during the childhood of her father, who later studied Lutheran theology in Heidelberg and Hamburg. In 1954, when Angela was just three months old, her father received a pastorate at the church in Quitzau, which was then in East Germany. The family moved to Templin and Merkel grew up in the countryside 90 kilometers north of East Berlin. In 1968, Merkel joined the Free German Youth, the official communist youth movement sponsored by the ruling Marxist-Leninist Socialist Unity Party of Germany. Membership was nominally voluntary, but those who did not join found it difficult to gain admission to higher education. She did not participate in the secular coming-of-age ceremony du Jondwaye, however, which was common in East Germany. Instead, she was confirmed. During this time, she participated in several compulsory courses on Marxism-Leninism with her grades only being regarded as sufficient. Merkel later said that life in the GDR was sometimes almost comfortable in a certain way, because there were some things one simply couldn't influence. Chapter 2 – Education and Scientific Career Merkel was educated at Karl Marx University, Leipzig, where she studied physics from 1973 to 1978. While a student, she participated in the reconstruction of the ruin of the Moritz space die, a project students initiated to create their own club and recreation facility on campus. Such an initiative was unprecedented in the GDR of that period, and initially resisted by the university, however, with backing of the local leadership of the said party, the project was allowed to proceed. At school she learned to speak Russian fluently, and was awarded prizes for her proficiency in Russian and mathematics. She was the best in her class in mathematics and Russian, and completed her school education with the best possible average obituary grade 1.0. Near the end of her studies, Merkel sought an assistant professorship at an engineering school. As a condition for getting the job, Merkel was told she would need to agree to report on her colleagues to officers of the Ministry for State Security. Merkel declined using the excuse that she could not keep secrets well enough to be an effective spy. Merkel worked and studied at the Central Institute for Physical Chemistry of the Academy of Sciences in Berlin Adlershof from 1978 to 1990. At first she and her husband squatted in Mitter. At the Academy of Sciences, she became a member of its FDJ secretariat. According to her former colleagues, she openly propagated Marxism, as the Secretary for Agitation and Propaganda. However, Merkel has denied this claim and stated that she was Secretary for Culture, which involved activities like obtaining theatre tickets and organizing talks by visiting Soviet authors. She stated, I can only rely on my memory, if something turns out to be different, I can live with that. After being awarded a doctorate for her thesis on quantum chemistry in 1986, she worked as a researcher and published several papers. In 1986, she was able to travel freely to West Germany to attend a congress, she also participated in a multi-week language course in Donetsk, in the then Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic. Chapter 3, Early Political Career Chapter 4 Section 1, Democratic Awakening, 1989-1990 the fall of the Berlin Wall in November 1989 served as the catalyst for Merkel's political career. 
Although she did not participate in the crowd celebrations the night the wall came down, one month later Merkel became involved in the growing democracy movement, joining the new party Democratic Awakening. Chapter 4 Section 2 Alliance for Germany, 1990 Following the first multi-party election in East Germany, she became the deputy spokesperson of the new pre-unification caretaker government under Lothar de Maizière. Merkel had impressed de Maizière with her adept dealing with journalists questioning the role of a party leader, Wolfgang Schinner, as an informal co-worker with the Homeland Security Services. Chapter 4 Section 3 Merger of Democratic Alliance into CDU, 1990. In April 1990, Democratic Awakening merged with the East German Christian Democratic Union, which in turn merged with its Western counterpart after reunification. Chapter 4 Section 4, Minister for Women and Youth, 1991-1994. In the German federal election of 1990, the first to be held following reunification, Merkel successfully stood for election to the Bundestag in the parliamentary constituency of Stralsund, Nordvorpommern, Rügen in North Mecklenburg-Vorpommern. She has won re-election from this constituency at the seven federal elections held since then. Almost immediately following her entry into Parliament, Merkel was appointed by Chancellor Helmut Kohl to serve as Minister for Women and Youth in the Federal Cabinet. Chapter 4 Section 5, Minister for Environment, 1994-1998 In 1994, she was promoted to the position of Minister for the Environment and Nuclear Safety, which gave her greater political visibility and a platform on which to build her personal political career. As one of Kohl's protégés and his youngest cabinet minister, she was frequently referred to by Kohl as Mein Mädchen. Chapter 4 Section 6 General Secretary of the CDU, 1998-2000. After the Kohl government was defeated at the 1998 election, Merkel was appointed Secretary General of the CDU, a key position as the party was no longer part of the federal government. Merkel oversaw a string of CDU election victories in six out of seven state elections in 1999, breaking the long-standing SPD Green hold on the Bundesrat. Following a party funding scandal that compromised many leading figures of the CDU dash including Kohl himself, and his successor as CDU leader, Wolfgang Schäuble, Merkel criticized her former mentor publicly and advocated a fresh start for the party without him. Chapter 4 Section 7, Chairperson of the CDU, 2000-2018 She was subsequently elected to replace Schäuble, becoming the first female leader of a German party on 10 April 2000. Her election surprised many observers, as her personality offered a contrast to the party she had been elected to lead, Merkel is a centrist Protestant originating from predominantly Protestant northern Germany, while the CDU is a male-dominated, socially conservative party with strongholds in western and southern Germany, and its Bavarian sister party, the CSU, has deep Catholic roots. Following Merkel's election as CDU leader, the CDU was not able to win in subsequent state elections. As early as February 2001 her rival Friedrich Mertz had made clear he intended to become Chancellor Gerhard Schroeder's main challenger in the 2002 election. Merkel's own ambition to become Chancellor was well known, but she lacked the support of most minister-presidents and other grandees within her own party. She was subsequently outmaneuvered politically by CSU leader Edmund Stoiber, to whom she eventually ceded the privilege of challenging Schroeder. He went on to squander a large lead in opinion polls to lose the election by a razor-thin margin in an election campaign that was dominated by the Iraq War. While Chancellor Schroeder made clear he would not join the war in Iraq, Merkel and the CDU-CSU supported the invasion of Iraq. Chapter 4 Section 8 Leader of the Opposition, 2002-2005 Chapter 4 Section 9 Subsection 1, Some Successes After Stoiber's defeat in 2002, in addition to her role as CDU leader, Merkel became leader of the opposition in the Bundestag, Friedrich Mertz, who had held the post prior to the 2002 election, was eased out to make way for Merkel. 
Stoiber voted for Merkel. Merkel supported a substantial reform agenda for Germany's economic and social system, and was considered more pro market than her own party. She advocated German labor law changes, specifically removing barriers to laying off employees and increasing the allowed number of work hours in a week. She argued that existing laws made the country less competitive, because companies could not easily control labor costs when business is slow. Merkel argued that Germany should phase out nuclear power less quickly than the Schroeder administration had planned. Merkel advocated a strong transatlantic partnership and German American friendship. In the spring of 2003, defying strong public opposition, Merkel came out in favor of the U.S. invasion of Iraq describing it as unavoidable and accusing Chancellor Gerhard Schroeder of anti-Americanism. She criticized the government's support for the accession of Turkey to the European Union, and favored a privileged partnership instead. In doing so, she reflected public opinion that grew more hostile toward Turkish membership of the European Union. Chapter 4 Section 9 Subsection 2 2005 National Election on 30 May 2005, Merkel won the CDU-CSU nomination as challenger to Chancellor Gerhard Schroeder of the SPD in the 2005 national elections. Her party began the campaign with a 21-point lead over the SPD in national opinion polls, although her personal popularity lagged behind that of the incumbent. However, the CDU-CSU campaign suffered when Merkel, having made economic competence central to the CDU's platform, confused gross and net income twice during a televised debate. She regained some momentum after she announced that she would appoint Paul Kirchhoff, a former judge at the German Constitutional Court and leading fiscal policy expert, as Minister of Finance. Merkel and the CDU lost ground after Kirchhoff proposed the introduction of a flat tax in Germany, again undermining the party's broad appeal on economic affairs and convincing many voters that the CDU's platform of deregulation was designed to benefit only the rich. This was compounded by Merkel's proposal to increase VAT to reduce Germany's deficit and fill the gap in revenue from a flat tax. The SPD were able to increase their support simply by pledging not to introduce flat taxes or increase VAT. Although Merkel's standing recovered after she distanced herself from Kirchhoff's proposals, she remained considerably less popular than Schroeder, and the CDU's lead was down to 9% on the eve of the election. On the eve of the election, Merkel was still favored to win a decisive victory based on opinion polls. On 18 September 2005, Merkel's CDU slash CSU and Schroeder's SPD went head to head in the national elections with the CDU-CSU winning 35.2% of the second votes to the SPD's 34.2%. The result was so close, both Schroeder and Merkel claimed victory. Neither the SPD-Green coalition nor the CDU-CSU and its preferred coalition partners, the Free Democratic Party, held enough seats to form a majority in the Bundestag. A grand coalition between the CDU-CSU and SPD faced the challenge that both parties demanded the chancellorship. However, after three weeks of negotiations, the two parties reached a deal whereby Merkel would become chancellor and the SPD would hold eight of the 16 seats in the cabinet. Chapter 4, Chancellor of Germany Chapter 5 Section 1, Coalition CDU-SPD 2005-2009. The first cabinet of Angela Merkel was sworn in at 1600 hours CT on the 22nd of November 2005. On the 31st of October 2005, after the defeat of his favoured candidate for the position of Secretary General of the SPD, Franz Munterfering indicated that he would resign as party chairman, which he did in November. Ostensibly responding to this, Edmund Stoiber, who was originally nominated as Minister for Economics and Technology, announced his withdrawal on 1 November 2005. While this was initially seen as a blow to Merkel's attempt at forming a viable coalition, the manner in which Stoiber withdrew earned him much ridicule and severely undermined his position as a Merkel rival. Separate conferences of the CDU, CSU, and SPD approved the proposed cabinet on 14 November 2005. 
The second cabinet of Angela Merkel was sworn in on 28 October 2009. On the 22nd of November 2005, Merkel assumed the office of Chancellor of Germany following a stalemate election that resulted in a grand coalition with the SPD. The coalition deal was approved by both parties at party conferences on 14 November 2005. Merkel was elected Chancellor by the majority of delegates in the newly assembled Bundestag on of November 2005, but 51 members of the governing coalition voted against her. Reports at the time indicated that the Grand Coalition would pursue a mix of policies, some of which differed from Merkel's political platform as leader of the opposition and candidate for Chancellor. The coalition's intent was to cut public spending whilst increasing VAT, social insurance contributions and the top rate of income tax. When announcing the coalition agreement, Merkel stated that the main aim of her government would be to reduce unemployment, and that it was this issue on which her government would be judged. Chapter 5 Section 2, Coalition CDU, FDP, 2009-2013 her party was re-elected in 2009 with an increased number of seats, and could form a governing coalition with the FDP. This term was overshadowed by the European debt crisis. Conscription in Germany was abolished and the Bundeswehr became a volunteer military. Unemployment sank below the mark of 3 million unemployed people. In the election of September 2013, Merkel won one of the most decisive victories in German history achieving the best result for the CDU slash CSU since reunification and coming within five seats of the first absolute majority in the Bundestag since 1957. However, with their preferred coalition partner, the FDP, failing to enter parliament for the first time since 1949, being below the minimum of 5% of votes required to enter parliament. Chapter 5 Section 3, Coalition CDU, SPD, 2013-2017. The CDU slash CSU turned to the SPD to form the third grand coalition in post-war German history, and the second under Merkel's leadership. The third cabinet of Angela Merkel was sworn in on 17 December 2013. Midway through her second term, Merkel's approval plummeted in Germany, resulting in heavy losses in state elections for her party. An August 2011 poll found her coalition had only 36% support compared to a rival potential coalition's 51%. However, she scored well on her handling of the recent euro crisis, and her approval rating reached an all-time high of 77% in February 2012 and again in July 2014. Merkel's approval rating dropped to 54% in October 2015, during the European migrant crisis the lowest since 2011. According to a poll conducted after terror attacks in Germany Merkel's approval rating dropped to 47%. Half of Germans did not want her to serve a fourth term in office compared to 42% in favor. However, according to a poll taken in October 2016, her approval rating had been found to have risen again, 54% of Germans were found to be satisfied with work of Merkel as Chancellor. According to another poll taken in November 2016, 59% were to found to be in favor of a renewed chancellor candidature of Merkel in 2017. According to a poll carried out just days after the 2016 Berlin truck attack, in which it was asked which political leader Germans trust to solve their country's problems, 56% named Merkel, 39% Seehofer, 35% Gabriel, 32% Schulz, 25% Erzdemir, 20% Wagenicht, 15% Lindner, and just 10% for Petri. In the 2017 election, Merkel led her party to victory for the fourth time. Both CEU slash CSU and SPD received a significantly lower proportion of the vote than they did in the 2013 election, and attempted to form a coalition with the FDP and Greens. The collapse of these talks led to stalemate. The German president Frank Walter Steinmeier subsequently appealed successfully to the SPD to change their hard stance and to agree to a third grand coalition with the CDU/CSU. 
A YouGov survey published in late December 2017 found that just 36% of all respondents wanted Merkel to stay at the helm until 2021, while half of those surveyed voters called for a change at the top before the end of the legislature. Chapter 5 Section 4, Coalition CDU, SPD, Since 2018 the fourth cabinet of Angela Merkel is the current government of Germany, and was sworn in on 14 March 2018 after. The negotiations that led to a grand coalition agreement with the Social Democrats were the longest in German post-war history, lasting almost six months. In August, 2019, 67% of Germans wanted Merkel to stay till the end of her term in 2021, while only 29% wanted her to step down earlier. Chapter 5, Political Positions Chapter 6, Section 1, Domestic Policy Chapter 6, Section 2 Subsection 1, Immigration, Refugees and Migration In October 2010, Merkel told a meeting of younger members of her conservative Christian Democratic Union Party at Potsdam that attempts to build a multicultural society in Germany had utterly failed, stating that, the concept that we are now living side by side and are happy about it does not work and we feel attached to the Christian concept of mankind, that is what defines us. Anyone who doesn't accept that is in the wrong place here. She continued to say that immigrants should integrate and adopt Germany's culture and values. This has added to a growing debate within Germany on the levels of immigration, its effect on Germany and the degree to which Muslim immigrants have integrated into German society. Merkel is in favor of a mandatory solidarity mechanism for relocation of asylum seekers from Italy and Greece to other EU member states as part of the long-term solution to Europe's migrants' crisis. Chapter 6, Section 2, 2015 European Migrant Crisis In late August, 2015, Chancellor Merkel announced that Germany would also process asylum applications from Syrian refugees if they had come to Germany through other EU countries. That year, nearly 1.1 million asylum seekers entered Germany. Junior coalition partner, Vice-Chancellor Zygmar Gabriel, said that Germany could take in 500,000 refugees annually for the next several years. German opposition to the government's admission of the new wave of migrants was strong and coupled with a rise in anti-immigration protests. Merkel insisted that Germany had the economic strength to cope with the influx of migrants and reiterated that there is no legal maximum limit on the number of migrants Germany can take. In September 2015, enthusiastic crowds across the country welcomed arriving refugees and migrants. Horst Seehofer, leader of the Christian Social Union in Bavaria the sister party of Merkel's Christian Democratic Union, and then Bavarian minister-president, attacked Merkel's policies. Seehofer criticized Merkel's decision to allow in migrants, saying that in a state of mind without rules, without system and without order because of a German decision. Seehofer estimated as many as 30% of asylum seekers arriving in Germany claiming to be from Syria are in fact from other countries, and suggested reducing EU funding for member countries that rejected mandatory refugee quotas. Meanwhile, Yasmin Fahimi, Secretary-General of the Social Democratic Party, the junior partner of the ruling coalition, praised Merkel's policy allowing migrants in Hungary to enter Germany as a strong signal of humanity to show that Europe's values are valid also in difficult times. In November 2015, there were talks inside the governing coalition to stop family unification for migrants for two years, and to establish transit zones on the border and, for migrants with low chances to get asylum approved, to be housed there until their application is approved. The issues are in conflict between the CSU who favored those new measures and threatened to leave the coalition without them, and the SPD who opposes them, Merkel agreed to the measures. The November 2015 Paris attacks prompted a re-evaluation of German officials' stance on the EU's policy toward migrants. There appeared to be a consensus among officials, with the exception of Merkel, that a higher level of scrutiny was needed in vetting migrants with respect to their mission in Germany. However, while not officially limiting the influx numerically, Merkel tightened asylum policy in Germany. In October 2016, Merkel traveled to Mali and Niger. 
The diplomatic visit took place to discuss how their governments could improve conditions which caused people to flee those countries and how illegal migration through and from these countries could be reduced, but the migrant crisis spurred right-wing electoral preferences across Germany with the alternative for Germany gaining 12% of the vote in the 2017 German federal election. These developments prompted debates over the reasons for increased right-wing populism in Germany. Literature argued that the increased right-wing preferences are a result of the European migrant crisis which has brought thousands of people, predominantly from Muslim countries to Germany, and spurred a perception among a share of Germans that refugees constitute an ethnic and cultural threat to Germany. Chapter 6, Section 3, 2018 Asylum Government Crisis In March 2018, the CSU's Horst Seehofer took over the role of Interior Minister. A policy Zayhofer announced is that he has a master plan for faster asylum procedures, and more consistent deportations. Under Zayhofer's plan, Germany would reject migrants who have already been deported or have an entry ban and would instruct police to turn away all migrants who have registered elsewhere in the EU, no matter if these countries agreed to take them back. Merkel feared that unilaterally sending migrants back to neighboring countries without seeking a multilateral European agreement could endanger the stability of the European Union. In June 2018, Seehofer backed down from a threat to bypass her in the disagreement over immigration policy until she would come back on 1 July from attempts to find a solution at the European level. On 1 July 2018, Seehofer rejected the agreement Merkel had obtained with EU countries as too little and declared his resignation during a meeting of his party's executive, but they refused to accept it. During the night of 2 July 2018, Seehofer and Merkel announced they had settled their differences and agreed to instead accept a compromise of tighter border control. As a result of the agreement, Seehofer agreed to not resign, and to negotiate bilateral agreements with the specific countries himself. Seehofer was criticized for almost bringing the government down while the monthly number of migrants targeted by that policy was in single figures. Chapter 6, Section 4 Subsection 1, Coronavirus Pandemic On 6 April 2020, Merkel stated, In my view, the European Union is facing the biggest test since its foundation and member states must show greater solidarity so that the bloc can emerge stronger from the economic crisis unleashed by the pandemic. Merkel has won international plaudits for her handling of the pandemic in Germany. During the German presidency of the European Council Merkel not only changed her mind, but spearheaded negotiating a reconstruction package for the time after the pandemic. Chapter 6, Section 4, Foreign Policy Merkel's foreign policy has focused on strengthening European cooperation and international trade agreements. Merkel has been widely described as the de facto leader of the European Union throughout her tenure as Chancellor. In 2015, with the absence of Stephen Harper, Merkel became the only leader to have attended every G20 meeting since the first in 2008, having been present at a record 14 summits as of 2019. She hosted the 12th meeting at the 2017 G20 Hamburg Summit. Chapter 6, Section 5 Subsection 1, United States One of Merkel's priorities was strengthening transatlantic economic relations. She signed the agreement for the Transatlantic Economic Council on 30 April 2007 at the White House. Merkel enjoyed good relations with U.S. Presidents George W. Bush and Barack Obama. Obama described her in 2016 as his closest international partner throughout his tenure as president. Obama's farewell visit to Berlin in November 2016 was widely interpreted as the passing of the torch of global liberal leadership to Merkel as Merkel was seen by many as the new standard bearer of liberal democracy since the election of Donald Trump as U.S. President. Upon the election of Donald Trump Merkel said that Germany and America are tied by values of democracy, freedom and respect for the law and human dignity, independent of origin, skin color, religion, gender sexual orientation or political views. I offer the next President of the United States, Donald Trump, close cooperation on the basis of these values. 
The comment was characterized by opinion columnist Jennifer Rubin as manifesting the psychological principle of reintegrative shaming. Following the G7 summit in Italy and the NATO summit in Brussels, Merkel stated on 28 May 2017 that the US was no longer the reliable partner Europe and Germany had depended on in the past. At an electoral rally in Munich, she said that we have to know that we must fight for our future on our own, for our destiny as Europeans, which has been interpreted as an unprecedented shift in the German and American transatlantic relationship. Chapter 6, Section 5 Subsection 2, China On 25 September 2007, Merkel met the 14th Dalai Lama for private and informal talks in the Chancellery in Berlin amid protest from China. China afterwards cancelled separate talks with German officials, including talks with Justice Minister Brigitte Tsipris. In recognition of the importance of China to the German economy, by 2014 Merkel had led seven trade delegations to China since assuming office in 2005. The same year, in March, China's President Xi Jinping visited Germany. In response to the death of Chinese Nobel Peace Prize laureate Liu Xiaobo, who died of organ failure while in government custody, Merkel said in a statement that Liu had been a courageous fighter for civil rights and freedom of expression. In July 2019, the UN ambassadors from 22 nations, including Germany, signed a joint letter to the UN condemning China's mistreatment of the Uyghurs as well as its mistreatment of other minority groups, urging the Chinese government to close the Xinjiang re-education camps. Chapter 6, Section 5 Subsection 3, Russia In 2006, Merkel expressed concern about over-reliance on Russian energy, but she received little support from others in Berlin. In June 2017, Merkel criticized the draft of new U.S. sanctions against Russia that target EU-Russia energy projects, including Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline. Chapter 6, Section 5 Subsection 4, Other Issues Merkel favors the association agreement between Ukraine and the European Union, but stated in December 2012 that its implementation depends on reforms in Ukraine. Merkel expressed support for Israel's right to defend itself during the 2014 Israel Gaza conflict. She telephoned Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on 9 July to condemn without reservation rocket fire on Israel. In June 2018, Merkel said that there had been no moral or political justification for the post-war expulsion of ethnic Germans, from Central and Eastern European countries. Chapter 6, Section 5, Eurozone Crisis During the financial crisis of 2007-2008, the German government stepped in to assist the mortgage company Hypo Real Estate with a bailout, which was agreed on 6 October with German banks to contribute €30 billion Euros and the Bundesbank €20 billion Euros to a credit line. On 4 October 2008, following the Irish government's decision to guarantee all deposits in private savings accounts, a move she strongly criticised, Merkel said there were no plans for the German government to do the same. The following day, Merkel stated that the government would guarantee private savings account deposits, after all. However, two days later, on 6 October 2008, it emerged that the pledge was simply a political move that would not be backed by legislation. Other European governments eventually either raised the limits or promised to guarantee savings in full. Chapter 6, Section 6, Social Expenditure At the World Economic Forum in Davos, 2013, she said that Europe had only 7% of the global population and produced only 25% of the global GDP, but that it accounted for almost 50% of global social expenditure. She went on to say that Europe could only maintain its prosperity by being innovative and measuring itself against the best. Since then, this comparison has become a central element in major speeches. The international financial press has widely commented on her thesis, with The Economist saying that. If Mrs. Merkel's vision is pragmatic, so too is her plan for implementing it. It can be boiled down to three statistics, a few charts and some facts on an A4 sheet of paper. The three figures are 7%, 25% and 50%. Mrs. Merkel never tires of saying that Europe has 7% of the world's population, 
25% of its GDP and 50% of its social spending. If the region is to prosper in competition with emerging countries, it cannot continue to be so generous. Adding that. She produces graphs of unit labor costs, at EU meetings in much the same way that the late Margaret Thatcher used to pull passages, from Friedrich Hayek's road to serfdom from her handbag. The Financial Times commented. Although Ms. Merkel stopped short of suggesting that a ceiling on social spending might be one yardstick for measuring competitiveness, she hinted as much in the light of soaring social spending in the face of an aging population. Chapter 6, Section 7, International Status Merkel has been widely described as the de facto leader of the European Union throughout her tenure as Chancellor. Merkel has twice been named the world's second most powerful person following Vladimir Putin by Forbes magazine, the highest ranking ever achieved by a woman. On 26 March 2014, Merkel became the longest-serving incumbent head of government in the European Union. In December 2015, Merkel was named as Time magazine's Person of the Year, with the magazine's cover declaring her to be the Chancellor of the Free World. In 2018, Merkel was named the most powerful woman in the world for a record 14th time by Forbes. Following the election of Donald Trump to the U.S. presidency in November 2016, Merkel was described by the New York Times as the liberal West's last defender. Following the election of Donald Trump, some media have described her as the new leader of the free world. Former U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton described Merkel in 2017 as the most important leader in the free world, she is currently the senior G7 leader. The Atlantic described her in 2019 as the world's most successful living politician, on the basis of both achievement and longevity. She was found in a 2018 survey to be the most respected world leader internationally. She was named as Harvard University's commencement speaker in 2019, Harvard University President Larry Bacow described her as one of the most widely admired and broadly influential statespeople of our time. Chapter 6, Section 8, Succession On 29 October 2018, Merkel announced that she would not seek re-election as leader of CDU at their party conference in December 2018, but intended to remain as Chancellor until the 2021 German federal election is to be held. She stated that she does not plan to seek any political office after this. The resignations followed October setbacks for the CSU in the Bavarian state election and for the CDU in the Hessian state election. In August 2019, Merkel hinted that she might return to academia, at the end of her term in 2021. She decided not to suggest any person as her successor as leader of the CDU. However, political observers had long considered Annegret Kramp Karrenbauer as Merkel's protege, groom for succession. This view was confirmed when Kramp Karrenbauer, widely seen as the Chancellor's favorite for the post, was voted to succeed Merkel as leader of the CDU in December 2018. Kramp Karrenbauer's elevation to defense minister after Ursula von der Leyen's departure to become president of the European Commission also boosted her standing as Merkel's most likely candidate for succession. In 2019, media outlets speculated that Kramp Karrenbauer may take over Merkel's position as chancellor sooner than planned if the current governing coalition proved unsustainable. The possibility was neither confirmed nor denied by the party. In February 2020, Kramp Karrenbauer announced that she would resign as party leader of the CDU in the summer, after party members in Thuringia defied her by voting with Alternative for Germany to support an FDP candidate for minister-president. Kramp Karrenbauer was succeeded by Armin Lachey at the 2021 CDU leadership election. Chapter 6 – Personal Life In 1977, at the age of 23, Merkel, then Angela Kasner, married physics student Ulrich Merkel, and took his surname. The marriage ended in divorce in 1982. Her second and current husband is quantum chemist and professor Joachim Sauer, who has largely remained out of the media spotlight. They first met in 1981, became a couple later and married privately on 30 December 1998. She has no children, 
but Sauer has two adult sons from a previous marriage. Merkel is a fervent football fan and has been known to listen to games while in the Bundestag and to attend games of the national team in her official capacity. Merkel stated that her favorite movie is The Legend of Paul and Paula, an East German movie released in 1973. Merkel has a fear of dogs after being attacked by one in 1995. Vladimir Putin brought in his Labrador retriever during a press conference in 2007. Putin claims he did not mean to scare her, though Merkel later observed, I understand why he has to do this, to prove he's a man, he's afraid of his own weakness. Since 2017 Merkel has been seen and filmed to shake visibly on several public occasions, recovering shortly afterwards. After one such occasion she attributed the shaking to dehydration, saying that she felt better after a drink of water. After three occasions where this happened in June 2019, she began to sit down during the performances of the national anthems during the state visits of Matei Fredriksson and Maya Sander the following month. Chapter 7 Section 1, Religion Angela Merkel is a Lutheran member of the Evangelical Church in Berlin, Brandenburg and Silesian Upper Lusatia, a united Protestant church body under the umbrella of the Evangelical Church in Germany. The ICBO is a church of the Union of Evangelical Churches. Before the 2004 merger of the Evangelical Church in Berlin-Brandenburg and the Evangelical Church in Silesian Upper Lusatia, she belonged to the former. In 2012, Merkel said, regarding her faith, I am a member of the Evangelical Church. I believe in God and religion is also my constant companion, and has been for the whole of my life. We as Christians should above all not be afraid of standing up for our beliefs. She also publicly declared that Germany suffers not from too much Islam but too little Christianity. Chapter 7, Honours and Awards Chapter 8 Section 1, Honours Chapter 8 Section 2 Subsection 1, National Honours Germany? Grand Cross First Class of the Order of Merit of the Federal Republic of Germany. Chapter 8 Section 2 Subsection 2, Foreign Honours Austria? Grand Decoration of Honour in Gold with Sash of the Order of Honour for Services to the Republic of Austria. Bulgaria? Grand Cross of the Order of the Balkan Mountains. India. Recipient of the Jawaharlal Nehru Award for International Understanding. Israel. Recipient of the President's Medal. Italy. Knight Grand Cross of the Order of Merit of the Italian Republic. Latvia. Grand Officer of the Order of the Three Stars. Lithuania. Grand Cross of the Order of Vitotus the Great. Norway. Knight Grand Cross of the Royal Norwegian Order of Merit. Peru. Grand Cross of the Order of the Son of Peru. Portugal. Grand Cross of the Order of Infante Henry. Saudi Arabia. Grand Officer of the Order of Abdulaziz Al Saud. United States. Recipient of the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Slovakia. First Class of the Order of the White Double Cross. Chapter 8 Section 2, Honorary Degrees. In 2007, Merkel was awarded an honorary doctorate from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. In June 2008, she was awarded an honorary doctorate from Leipzig University. University of Technology in Wrocław in September 2008 and Babes Boyai University from Klujnopoka, Romania on 12 October 2010 for her historical contribution to the European unification and for her global role in renewing international cooperation. On 23 May 2013, she was awarded an honorary doctorate from the Radboud University Nijmegen. In November 2013, she was awarded the honorary doctorate title by the University of Szeged. In November 2014, she was awarded the title Doctor Honoris Causa by Comenius University in Bratislava. In September 2015, she was awarded the title Doctor Honoris Causa by the University of Bern. 
In January 2017, she was awarded the title Doctor Honoris Causa jointly by Ghent University and Catholic University at Leuven. In May 2017, Merkel was awarded the title of Doctrix Honoris Causa by the University of Helsinki. In May 2019, Merkel was awarded an honorary doctorate from Harvard University. Chapter 8 Section 3 Awards In 2006, Merkel was awarded the Vision for Europe Award for her contribution toward greater European integration. She received the Karlsbrace in 2008 for Distinguished Services to European Unity. In March 2008, she received the Benet Brith Europe Award of Merit. Merkel topped Forbes magazine's list of the world's 100 most powerful women in 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018 and 2019. In 2010, new statesmen named Merkel as one of the world's 50 most influential figures. On 16 June 2010, the American Institute for Contemporary German Studies at Johns Hopkins University in Washington, D.C., awarded Merkel its Global Leadership Award in recognition of her outstanding dedication to strengthening German-American relations. On 21 September 2010, the Leo Beck Institute, a research institution in New York City devoted to the history of German-speaking Jewry, awarded Merkel the Leo Beck Medal. The medal was presented by former U.S. Secretary of the Treasury and current Director of the Jewish Museum Berlin, W. Michael Blumenthal, who cited Merkel's support of Jewish cultural life, and the integration of minorities in Germany. On 31 May 2011, she received the Jawaharlal Olnero Award for the year 2000, and nine from the Indian government. She received the Award for International Understanding. Forbes' list of the world's most powerful people ranked Merkel as the world's second most powerful person in 2012, the highest ranking achieved by a woman since the list began in 2009, she was ranked fifth in 2013 and 2014. On 28 November 2012, she received the Heinz Galinsky Award in Berlin, Germany. In 2013, she received the Indira Gandhi Peace Prize. In December 2015, she was named Time Magazine's Person of the Year. In May 2016, Merkel received the International Four Freedoms Award from the Roosevelt Foundation in Middelburg, the Netherlands. In 2017, Merkel received the Elie Wiesel Award from the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. In 2020, Merkel received the Henry A. Kissinger Prize from the American Academy in Berlin. Chapter 8 Comparisons As a female politician from a center-right party who is also a scientist, Merkel has been compared by many in the English-language press to former British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. Some have referred to her as Iron Lady, Iron Girl, and even the Iron Frau, all alluding to Thatcher, whose nickname was the Iron Lady. Political commentators have debated the precise extent to which their agendas are similar. Later in her tenure, Merkel acquired the nickname Mutti. She has also been called the Iron Chancellor, in reference to Otto von Bismarck, but in addition to being the first female German Chancellor, the first to have grown up in the former East Germany, and the youngest German Chancellor since the Second World War, Merkel is also the first born after World War II, and the first Chancellor of the Federal Republic with a background in natural sciences. While she studied physics, Her predecessors studied law, business or history, among other professions. Chapter 9, Controversies Merkel has been criticized for being personally present and involved at the M100 Media Award handover to Danish cartoonist Kurt Westergaard, who had triggered the Mohammed cartoons controversy. This happened at a time of fierce emotional debate in Germany over a book by the former Deutsche Bundesbank executive and finance senator of Berlin Thilo Sarrazin, which was critical of the Muslim immigration. At the same time she condemned a planned burning of Korans by a fundamental pastor in Florida. 
The Central Council of Muslims in Germany and the Left Party as well as the German Green Party criticized the action by the center-right Chancellor. The Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung newspaper wrote, this will probably be the most explosive moment of her chancellorship so far. Others have praised Merkel and called it a brave and bold move, or cause of freedom of speech. Merkel's position towards the negative statements by Thilo Sarrazin with regard to the integration problems with Arab and Turkish people in Germany has been critical throughout. According to her personal statements, Sarrazin's approach is totally unacceptable and counterproductive to the ongoing problems of integration. The term alternativos, which was frequently used by Angela Merkel to describe her measures addressing the European sovereign debt crisis, was named the UN Word of the Year 2010 by a jury of linguistic scholars. The wording was criticized as undemocratic, as any discussion on Merkel's politics would thus be deemed unnecessary or undesirable. The expression is credited for the name of the political party Alternative for Germany, which was founded in 2013. In July 2013, Merkel defended the surveillance practices of the National Security Agency, and described the United States as our truest ally throughout the decades. During a visit of U.S. President Barack Obama in Berlin, Merkel said on 19 June 2013 in the context of the 2013 mass surveillance disclosures, the Internet is uncharted territory for us all. This statement led to various Internet memes and online mockery of Merkel. Merkel compared the NSA to the Stasi when it became known that her mobile phone was tapped by that agency. In response, Susan Rice pledged that the US will desist from spying on her personally, but said there would not be a no espionage agreement between the two countries. In July 2014 Merkel said trust between Germany and the United States could only be restored by talks between the two, and she would seek to have talks. She reiterated the US remained Germany's most important ally. Her statement Islam is part of Germany during a state visit of the Turkish Prime Minister Ahmet Davutoglu in January 2015 induced criticism within her party. The parliamentary group leader Volker Kauder said that Islam is not part of Germany and that Muslims should deliberate on the question why so many violent people refer to the Quran. In October 2015, Horst Seehofer, Bavarian state premier and CSU leader, criticized Merkel's policy of allowing in hundreds of thousands of migrants from the Middle East, we're now in a state of mind without rules, without system and without order because of a German decision. Zehofer attacked Merkel policies in sharp language, threatened to sue the government in the High Court, and hinted that the CSU might topple Merkel. Many MPs of Merkel's CDU party also voiced dissatisfaction with Merkel. Chancellor Merkel insisted that Germany has the economic strength to cope with the influx of migrants and reiterated that there is no legal maximum limit on the number of migrants Germany can take. At the conclusion of the May 2017 Group of Sevens leaders in Sicily, Merkel criticized American efforts to renege on earlier commitments on climate change. According to Merkel, the discussions were difficult and marred by dissent. Here we have the situation where six members, or even seven if you want to add the EU, stand against one. Merkel has faced criticism for failing to take a tough line on the People's Republic of China. The Asia Times reported that unlike certain of her European counterparts, her China diplomacy has focused on non-interference in Beijing's internal affairs. As such, Merkel was reportedly furious when her foreign minister Heiko Maas received Hong Kong dissident Joshua Wong in Berlin in September, a move that Beijing publicly protested. Chapter 10 in the arts and media. Since 1991, Merkel has sat annually for sitting and standing portraits by, and interview with, Herland Kolbel. Merkel was portrayed by Swiss actress Anna Katharina in the 2012 political satire film The Dictator. Merkel features as a main character in two of the three plays that make up the Europeans trilogy by Paris based UK playwright Nick Oday, Bruges and Turfuren. A character named Merkel, accompanied by a sidekick called Schäuble, also appears as the sinister female henchman in Michael Parascos's novel In Search of Sixpence. On the American sketch comedy Saturday Night Live, she has been parodied by Kate McKinnon since 2013. On the British sketch comedy Tracy Ullman's show, comedian Tracy Ullman has parodied Merkel to international acclaim with German, 
media dubbing her impersonation as the best spoof of Merkel in the world. In 2016, a documentary film Angela Merkel, The Unexpected, a story about her unexpected rise to power from an East German physicist to the most powerful woman in the world, was produced by Broadview TV and MDR in collaboration with Arta and Das Erster.